Hi, I'm Rianne Minardi, and today I'm going to talk to you about how to combine big stitch hand quilting with machine quilting on your home machine. So I really like this technique because it adds so much dimension and an extra design element to any quilt, and I use it almost on every quilt I make. So if we look at this example, you can see that the background in the negative space, I have machine quilted on my domestic machine, and in the focal point, I have used a large stitch, high contrast thread to create a different uh, design element and focal point. So it's really easy to do this technique, and I'm gonna show you how. So first, start with your quilt top. I kind of like to start on a small quilt top because it's easier to manipulate um, on my machine and with hand quilting. Um, but maybe on this one, I wanna talk about, I wanna think about the direction my stitches are gonna go. So I like how on this top, I have this nice directional element coming up and to the left. So maybe I want to accentuate that in uh, the quilting. So today what I'm gonna do is use a 45 degree mark to just um, create these lines that go straight over to the side. I like to use marking pens that contrast with my fabrics enough so that I can, and can see them. Uh, on the dark here, I'm gonna use a chalk marking pen and maybe in the, the light colors, I'm gonna use a blue or a darker color. So on my ruler, I'm going to use my 45 degree line right here and match it up with one of my seams because I want my lines to be uh, exactly um, geometrically going this way from my, from my piece. So uh, I'm gonna start um, an inch away right here, and I think that's just a good, a good place to kind of start my lines. So I'm gonna come over here and mark. And for now, I wanna skip over this middle section because I'll come back in and mark that later. So maybe go over it a couple times. That's looking really nice. And then I'll move my piece and continue the line I made. If you can match up your 45 degree line anywhere else on your quilt, I would recommend doing that to make sure that you maintain that line. This one uh, is, is pretty close, so continue that. And that's our first line. So now to continue, I'm gonna come back down here and I wanna use my previously marked line to, to mark my next one. So on this quilt, maybe I want to quilt one inch away and you wanna check the settings on your, um, on your batting to see what the recommended distance is. So that's how you mark, and I would mark all the way around the quilt in this fashion, and then uh, use every line that I've already made as a reference point for the next line, even when I come down here, so that everything is spaced out nicely. And my last lines, if they're not an inch away from the edge, uh, it doesn't matter so much here as it will somewhere else in your quilt. So this is what it looks like when I have all of my, my lines marked for machine quilting. And uh, I've made my sandwich at this point. I've used a spray baste here. You can also use pins. You can use your favorite basting method. Um, just anything that will hold your sandwich together for quilting. So now I'm gonna go to the machine and stitch my first line. I like to start in the middle of my quilt so that I get a nice flat seam with no puckers. So I'm gonna bring my, my quilts over to probably about here. And today I'm just using a walking foot. And on this one I have a wide toe, which makes it really great to see these lines I've already marked. I'm gonna use my, um, I'm gonna use my locking stitch to mark, uh, to make five small stitches to keep it in place. And then we're off. It's nice to go slow at first. I like um, a standard stitch length, whatever kind of feels the best. And then you just continue on to the edge of your quilt. So, and even on my 
my negative space, the background fabric here. I like to use a contrasting thread because it continues with the design elements that I, I want to incorporate throughout the entire piece. So uh, I love the white against the dark because I'm going to use dark against my light. So, um, and then maybe I'll just come right over to my next, my next uh, line, do another locking stitch, and then continue on. So once you've quilted your entire quilt top, it's time to mark your lines and get ready for hand quilting. I like to wait until my entire top is pieced, or sorry, my entire top is quilted before I mark my lines just to make sure things haven't shifted and I still have nice clean lines. So we follow the same type of marking technique and just come in here and I like to kind of match up my, my points and just draw that line right through the middle. And it doesn't really matter where you start or stop, just make sure you've got all your lines. And on this one, what you could do also is make your contrasting hand stitches uh, go a different direction. If you wanted to create some, some tension in your quilt maybe or um, create a different type of design, you can make these go any direction you want. You can use curves, you can use uh, a perpendicular line, you can do basically anything. The, there's a lot of possibilities and it's just up to whatever design aesthetic you want. So once we have some lines marked, I would mark most of these, um, we're ready to do our hand stitching. So for this, there's a, a few different materials you can use. You can use a, a six weight to create that high contrast look. It's a little bit thicker than your standard hand quilting thread. You can use a pearl cotton or an embroidery floss or a sashiko thread. Um, anything you kind of have on hand will work as long as it's a little bit thicker than your, your average thread. So today I'm going to be using some embroidery floss and um, I'm actually gonna use the entire strand. I'm not gonna pull out any, any of these, uh, these particular threads and separate it. So I like to start with a small length. Usually the, the length of your arm is a good indicator. And first I just tie a knot. Sometimes I double knot it, but with this, the knot seems pretty sturdy, so I'm just gonna use one knot. You can double knot it for extra stability. Um, but some, I do like to pop my knot through to the sandwich. So I also wanna talk about these needles for a second. You're gonna need a needle that has a, a wider eye and is a little bit thicker than your standard hand quilting needle. So what I have right here, maybe you can see them better here, uh, are sashiko needles, and you can see they have that nice wide eye that's gonna accommodate our thick thread. They come in some different sizes. You can use a short one if you're making a lot of tight turns or curves. You can use a long one if you're using a running stitch. So it really is just up to you. Um, next, we're gonna thread our needle. And just do your best to, to get it through. Oops. I like to think about needling my thread rather than threading my needle because it makes it a lot easier. So putting the needle over the top of your thread instead. So when I'm ready to start stitching, I kind of like to bunch my quilt up a little bit so I can manipulate it easier. And I'm gonna start kind of in the middle right after I've, I've left off with my machine stitching. So what I'm doing here is just putting my, my needle through the back of my quilt like you normally would and pulling through. So at this point, like I said, I like to pop my, pop my knot back through. So you can see what we have on the back is uh, our little tail with our knot. What I like to do is just grab the backing and kind of pop it through. It shouldn't take too much effort if you have a small knot and it just buries itself in there very nicely. So when you're ready to start, I like to grab the quilt with my hand, kind of looks like this, and use my fingers on the bottom to tell my top hand where to stitch. So I might place my, uh, my needle down just about a quarter of an inch or so and then use my bottom hand to kind of push the needle back up through the top at the point where I want it to come out. And you can rock the needle and get as many on as you're comfortable with here. 
and just carry on this way. Once you want to pull it through, uh, just pull it through very, very um, simply. And then I like to kind of stretch out my material and make sure there's no, no puckers. So I would just continue like this. This is a great start to our quilt and it's a really fun and relaxing project that you can do in home in front of the TV, um, on your travels, anything. So let's take a look at some of these quilts I've created with this technique. So this quilt uses, well, just hand quilting, I guess. The, the uh, stitches are big, but they do kind of blend into the background here. But you can see how, what a great texture it creates when it's densely quilted like this. On these quilts, you can see that I've used mostly a high contrast hand quilting technique. And these white stitches really stand out against the navy blue, and these blue stitches really stand out against the gray. Um, I love the look that this creates and how it leads your eye around the quilt. I also love this quilt in the same fashion. The, the, blue, quilt, the blue quilting lines um, just really make the design pop. So that's how easy it is to combine machine quilting with hand quilting and I hope you try it.